currently we are here to talk about glass but as a disclaimer whatever i say in this video is what i have been doing and following for the kind of aquariums i build it's not the rule of the thumb you can deviate you can have uh, other opinions there are people who build tanks in different ways uh, this is what works for me is not a mandate that you have to follow this but yeah this is what have uh, got me success while i'm building aquariums right so please use your own uh, judgment and uh, decide what you want to do and how you want to go ahead with uh, building aquariums uh, this is the part 2 of uh, the two part series of how to build your own aquarium uh if you haven't watched the first part i would really appreciate or advise you to go ahead and check the part 1 video first so that you will get to know the different items and uh, materials we need to build an aquarium and then come back here and watch this video we'll be talking about glasses the different uh, uh, types of glasses how to measure them uh, how to decide what kind of uh, uh, thickness we are looking at for the aquarium and stuff like that and also i'll show you how to build an aquarium in this video okay uh so to start off with the types of glasses right uh primarily there are two types of glasses available in the market um, right now the normal clear glasses and the extra clear glasses the major difference being normal clear glasses have a higher concentration of iron in them compared to extra clear glasses that's why extra clear glasses are also called low iron glasses uh the way you can visually uh, differentiate between the two are uh, if you that this is a normal glass so if you look at the glass from the sides you'll see a green tint along the edges right and also when you stack multiple glasses together they give a very uh, you know murky greenish tint but with extra clear glasses uh, there's no tint it's like crystal clear but i'll be using a normal glasses extra clear glasses do uh, cost a bit more than this almost the double as far as i know so yeah for the video i'll stick to normal glasses uh the most critical thing about uh, getting glasses is the measurements most of us do not know how to cut glasses and i would actually advise you not to try it uh, if you're not good with handling glasses to start off with so get to know glasses in general know how to handle them move them around and then you i can show you how to cut glasses but to start off with uh it's better to go to a glass shop give them the measurements and ask for ask them to cut it for you it would be a, a lot more precise it's just better to go to a professional for this to start off with so uh, glasses are the dimensions are usually measured in inches so when we are measuring the sides and the panels that we need we we'll always need to mark them in inches not in centimeters but when we are talking about the thickness of the glass that is always measured in millimeters or mm's so you need to keep this in mind we are never going to swap the measure units around glass measurements length and like the dimensions are always in inches the thickness is always in millimeter okay so suppose we are building a tank which is you know, rectangular in shape or a cube like this one will be a cube tank but just in case so we have five panels building up an aquarium the front panel and the rear panel the two side panels and the base in normal day to day aquariums the two panels the front and the back will be of the same size the two sides should be of the same size and the base would be another size now depending uh, upon the overall measurements the sides may be equal or not but the groups are always the same the front and back are equal the sides are equal and the base is like of the third group now if i, I want to show you something like this is one of the biggest mistakes that i find 
uh, people doing when they're planning to order glasses or like even measure glasses now this is the base of a cube tank and when i'm talking about a cube tank it means like all the sides are of the same size when you are planning to measure uh, the different panels the base will be the length and the breadth of the aquarium okay so that's in this case it's 8 inches by 8 inches the two sides or the, i'm sorry the uh, the front panel and the back panel would be the length and the height of the aquarium so in this case 8 inches by 8 inches again now for the sides it's ideally breadth by height so that's technically 8 inches by 8 inches but there's a small calculation that we always need to do so that we don't mess up the aquarium when we are building an aquarium we place all the four sides on the base okay. so in that case we use up a little bit of the glass on the base as well so we don't get 8 inches by 8 inches all the way around the way I build my aquariums are the side panels are sandwiched between the front and the rear panel so the front and the rear panel uh, take up the entire length and the side panels come in between whatever is left over there. Uh, if I show it to you, so this is a base, and this is one of the uh, front or side uh, back panels, which is about eight inches and eight inches again. So when I'm placing this over here at the edge, this no longer is eight inches. Right? The breadth has decreased by. 5 millimeters because I'm using 5 millimeter glasses for the entire project. So the B, uh, the side panel cannot be of 8 inches, it needs to be a little shorter. Again, when we are placing another of the front or back panels, then the length, the breadth gets even shorter, like another 5 millimeters gone. So we are actually left with 8 inches minus 5 millimeters over here and 5 millimeters over here. This, that's a total of 10 millimeters. Now that should be what the side panel, uh, the dimension of the side panel should be. Uh, it cannot be 8 inches in total. It needs to be 8 inches minus twice the thickness of the glass. Okay. Uh, in this case, it's five millimeters. Suppose we were using uh, glasses which were eight millimeters thick. We don't need that for this size of an aquarium, but still, hypothetically, then uh, I would be considering uh, subtracting uh, sixteen millimeters in total uh, from the entire eight inches, and then decide on how uh, or what the thickness uh, the size of the glass would be so if I place the side panels over here you would actually see it's shorter from both the sides so this is uh, one of the most crucial things to keep in mind that we are not ordering the side panels uh, of the same size as the breadth of the entire tank it needs to be a little shorter and the calculation is breadth of the aquarium minus twice the thickness of individual panels. There are times when the measurements might not be uh, in like whole inches. So uh, these are the centimeters, and the upper, like this side, the bigger, you know, those, which are far apart, are the inches. Now. When we go ahead and order glasses, uh, there might be uh, scenarios where we are using a fraction of the inch, not the entire inch. So that's why you need to know how to read this, uh, these retractable tapes because these are the tapes that the glass shops use as well, uh, like I have uh, talked about uh, in the uh, previous video, part one. 
Now, uh, an inch is divided into eight major fractions. Okay, if I get a little closer, so let's say suppose three to four, you'd find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, medium-sized lines and uh, another like even smaller lines in between them. Two of the sections, like three and the smallest one, and then the medium sized line. So the entire section is one fraction. When we are talking about three and a half inch, it's actually three inches and one, two, three, four fractions. This is three and a half. Now, this is uh, where uh, things get a little complicated. Inches do not work the way centimeters or millimeters do. In centimeters or millimeters, when we are talking about 0.5, it's usually numerically 5. So let's say um, you know, uh, we say about 10.5 centimeters. It's, it would be 10 centimeters and 5 millimeters. But when we're dealing with inches and foot or feet, when we say it's about one foot and uh, 1.5 feet let's say like one and a half feet then it's not one foot and five inches it's one foot and six inches because 12 inches build up one foot and eight fractions build up one inch it's uh, you know three and right over here the second fraction so it's not 3.1234 because it's the fourth line from 3. No, it's 3 and uh, no, 2, 2 eighths of an inch. Okay. So when we're dealing with inches, you need to understand how fractions work. Uh, 8 fractions build up 1 inch. And millimeters yeah uh, only comes in when we are talking about the thickness of the glass now uh, before i go into uh, how thick the glass one, uh, needs to be before i forget when you're getting your glasses cut make sure you ask them to get it polished uh, along the edges right otherwise a fresh cut glass is super sharp and like one flick and it's gonna be a bloody mess like literally so um, it might not affect how the aquarium's being built but it's very dangerous to deal uh, fresh cut glasses uh, without uh, getting it polished I guess always um, they might charge a bit extra for that but it's definitely worth the expense uh, and they, usually they'll go in for two uh, kinds of polishes one is like the proper super polish where the they bevel the edges completely i do not prefer those because that uh, decreases the surface area along the edges so i ask them to do a light belt or just to take the sharpness off the edge just uh, basic polishing enough to not uh, keep it any uh, sharp anymore so that I can, I can smoothly run my fingers on it without hurting myself and that's it um, they would actually maybe like uh, ask uh, they charge you a little less for basic polishing than like complete polishing so uh, yeah that's out of the way uh, now to decide uh, how to decide how uh, what would be the thickness of the glass now glass the thickness of the glass will definitely depend on the volume of the water that's uh, we are planning to uh, hold in the aquarium i'll just aim to be really careful with glasses so always keep them away uh, volume and thickness they are um, directly proportional the higher the volume of water the thicker the glass you need and uh, there are tried and tested thicknesses uh, corresponding to the volume of water uh, held by tanks. So you can uh, search them, uh, search for them online, or I'll try to, you know, make a chart out of it and uh, you know upload on my page. Now, the thickness of uh, the glass will also vary with the height of the aquarium for the same volume. Like, so suppose we have two aquariums which are 
you know around 100 gallons each but one is uh, higher than the other one then definitely comparatively the glass on the uh, for the aquarium which is higher sh would need to be a little thicker than the glass which has a lower height because the pressure exerted by water increases with the height of the water column so the higher the aquarium the thicker the glass would be and we might also need bracing I don't want to talk about bracing right away uh, I might make another like that advanced uh, video where I might talk about bracing and you know professional finish and stuff like that but for this video we'll stick to the basic five sides five glass panels in an 8 inch cube in this case 5 millimeter glasses and yeah that's it so these are things that you need to keep in mind before you go ahead and order your uh, glasses and yeah since I have my glasses ready they were already ordered let's go ahead and build an aquarium okay so we are all set to start building our own aquarium um, if you want to go through the list again of the things that, that are required please uh, watch the first video and uh, so just come back and start watching from here again so this is a silicon tube that we have talked about in the last video and uh, it's like a brand new one uh, but I wanted to show you how to install it on the caulking gun just keep this aside I don't need this for now Take a hacksaw and make sure you're not cutting at the base but at the tip of the neck. Just enough to get this uh, conical head off. So. And it's not too hard so you can just like apply a very little pressure and it slices through. Uh, you don't need this anymore so dump it anywhere and yeah. that's a fresh tip you just screw it on tight and press the lock pull the piston back place it in and Keep on pressing the trigger. I don't need this anymore, so I'll keep it aside. So I keep on pressing the trigger until silicon starts coming out of the tip, and you can actually see it, you know, flowing out. I don't know if it's visible in the camera, but you can actually see it in person. So you keep on pressing it and yep nice clean smooth flow wipe the head off keep it aside uh, now this is a base glass okay, it's 8 inches by 8 inches since we are building an 8 inch cube now the way I build it is that I would place two sides or one of the rear panels of the front panel and a side together like so that they support each other and you like they kind of hold each other up without in, any help of teeth or clamps so since it's at a square a piece of glass I can turn it around like use any of the sides um, this is one of the panels that we'll use for uh, the front or the sides. I'm sorry, the front or the back. So this is also eight by eight inches, and this is one of the panel which is going to go to the sides. So this is going to be a little shorter, as we have discussed before, on one of the sides. So I'll just need to measure. Uh, yep, this is the side which is shorter than 8 inches because the other side is 8. So, since this is the shorter length, uh, this will actually 
go like this so just place it over here all right so uh, since the side panel is going to be sandwiched between the front and the rear panel so we need silicon on the edge actually it's on the edge of the side panel but it's a little hard to do that so what we'll do is we'll apply the silicon on this side uh, where you know the side panel is supposed to paste itself something like this so a thin line of silicon along here and along two sides of the base glass uh, so that these two can like you know paste these two on the base so just move it a little further away uh, make sure you have your uh, you know, rag or newspapers handy just keep them around and okay we press the trigger from one hand uh, use the other hand for balance you can even use your fingers to I'll just turn it around uh, you know to make a margin so that it doesn't slip away like this glass is pretty slippery so while you're pressing down on like this you will have a tendency for the gun to actually like go ahead and slip away out and it might be a little messy so what I prefer is using my fingers uh, preferably with this one and you know use it as a frame or a border for the gun to you know, glide through and not go out or like, run this way either of the ways it's kind of a lock so gently press the silicon and run a smooth line The idea is to keep the pressure on the trigger as uh, consistent as possible for a straight smooth uh, finish. So, All right now there is a bit of a gap right at this corner so just a bit of silicon over there a very gentle pressure on the trigger and yeah, that's it now even after you stop squeezing it you will find a little bit of uh, silicon coming out the tip because of the uh, pressure that's being built up in the tube so just press on the lock it kind of uh, loosens the piston from the back of the tube and that's it it stops oozing out so you just wipe off the head to the side now we're gonna place this and this glass over here so I need silicon on this side as well And make sure you do not forget to wipe your fingers every time. Just wipe them really good. Take this piece of glass. Gently place it on the piece. Try to maintain the edge as much as possible you can push it around a bit because silicon does not cure or dry off instantly but it does give a dirty finish to the tank so just try to align the glasses minimum contact with your fingers 
just make sure the edges are aligned like this one's a bit off so yeah push it in I can push this glass in a bit and So we have got a lot of silicon oozing out of both ways, like inside and outside. Uh, we'll need to worry about the inside ones for now. So just use your fingers, a consistent pressure and wipe the silicon along the edge. That's it. Uh, not only it gives a clear finish, but also it makes sure that it presses down on any air gaps or air trapped air bubbles and uh, you know decreases the chances of any leak whatsoever so. I just apply a little bit of silicon over here again just right along the edge just make sure it's as thin as possible and one along this edge as well not too much because we have already yeah, wiped that edge off so we don't need much but I thought like something around the corner would help so one more clean sweep and yeah keep it quick keep it uh, consistent uh, don't stop your fingers or hand at a point um, yeah, that should be and always make sure you're wiping your fingers. Um, and also, you need to gauge uh, how well the glasses have you know, stuck with each other. Uh, you use a, uh, you know, a lot of pressure, and you might actually push the glass off the edge. Uh, you don't apply a lot of pressure, and it's not going to work. So. You, just need to get you get used to how uh, this is done. It's all about practice. So I'll just follow this edge as well. A good clean line. Just for balance, I'll keep on keep one finger over here, but I'm not pushing with it. I just keep it balanced so that the glass doesn't push away. And Uh, this is not a zero silicon or a minimal silicon work. I'm showing you the basic way of building an aquarium. Once you get used to the basic ideas, then you can go ahead and uh, try the advanced versions where uh, there's almost no silicon or you know the uh, professional finished aquariums. But I would really recommend you to uh, keep on practicing a lot. And like cannot emphasize uh, enough on the fact or uh, the idea of practicing a lot. Uh, it took me almost uh, one and a half to two years of building aquariums to finally reach that zero silicon um, finish. Uh, it, it's about a lot of lot of tricks, but then again, you need to have that uh, smoothness or that confidence using glass and silicon and everything. So just. Keep on building aquariums. It does not need to be, uh, you know, classy or you know, well finished at the beginning. You just make sure you uh, can successfully build aquariums which do not leak. Uh, uh, they uh, do not break. They hold their shape uh, throughout usage. <laughs> That's the basic of any aquarium. So get that fixed first, and then you can think about or start working on uh, building aquariums which look nice see uh, it's almost like self standing structure right now so we have the base we have one of the front or back panels and we have one of the sides uh, the next step would be placing the other side and the last step would be placing the uh, you know front or back panel like uh, let's say this is the back panel so we'll place the front panel at the end 
so I need silicone along this edge and this edge now like on on the base and on the rear panel glass so again using this finger as a frame so that the gun doesn't slip around line over there and another one over here this is what you actually need to practice uh, you know the straight sleek line of silicon you cannot have it like running around a lot uh, dramatically increases the chances of gaps, leaks, it looks weird, so yeah, try to keep the line as uh, minimal as possible, uh, because, and also because we are using 5M glasses, so we barely need a thick line, like, actually we do not at all, uh, so, because once we put the glass on, it's gonna spread anyways, so, yeah. now, I need to, just check it once which one is shorter all right this is the shorter side uh, yeah because this is 8 inches and this is pretty much shorter so this goes along the breadth so I'll just put it in try not to slide the glasses along each other I use a lot of uh, people or newspaper uh, keep my fingers as clean as possible uh, but then there is always a chance of some residue on the finger so if you accidentally touch uh, a part of the glass with your with silicon on your fingers don't worry you can actually scrape it off later but try to minimize that as much as possible so just gently press the glass from this side so that the walls stick together and the weight of the glass works on the base so you don't really need to press on it just like it sticks by itself just make sure it's not uh, you know sliding off the edge they need to be aligned well and yeah so and I also have enough silicone on the inside edges already so I don't need to apply anymore I'll just wipe them off a bit of pressure over here so it doesn't get pushed out and uh, ah, smooth line over here that's it it's already taking the shape the only thing we are left off with is the front panel in this case uh, for the front panel I'll be applying silicone on the edges of both the side glasses and on top of so B is glass over here. You need to keep on adjusting this uh, panels a bit. So don't worry about that. Just try to limit the movement. You know movement of the glasses after the silicon has been applied as minimal as possible because the more the glasses move uh, higher the chances of air gaps and air bubbles within the silicon itself so yeah and that's what it leads to leakages and seepages 
So leakage is something which would happen instantaneously when you fill it up with water. Seepages are even worse because they do take a lot of time. Uh, the water seeps through you know, microscopic or hairline gaps and it might even take them weeks to finally come out of the tank and you actually cannot go ahead and identify the seepage as well as a leakage so you have to end up dismantling the entire uh, tank or at least that size of the aquarium so that you can reseal the entire thing so it's messy so take your time don't rush into building aquariums a smooth consistent flow of the silicon so this was actually not too consistent I should have gone a little uh, quicker this was a little too slow so this is what you need to get in balance and this only comes after a lot of experience right so that's around it I don't need to measure any of the size because it's 8 inches by 8 inches so I can actually use it as uh, any of the sides so I gently put it on the base Just keep one hand pressing down on this glass so that it doesn't come off while I'm wiping the edges. Not much to work with on this side, so I'll apply a thin film of silicone. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to building your basic aquarium. I'll let this tank be by itself for the next 24 hours. That's the usual curing time I follow for aquariums which are smaller than about you know, up to 50 or 60 gallons. Anything bigger, I let them cure for a little longer. So I'll come back tomorrow and uh, give a little bit of finishing touches here and there. I'll show you what to do. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's pretty much done for today. I'll let the fan, I'll switch on the fan and uh, yeah, just not disturb it. And yeah, that's it. Hopefully tomorrow we're gonna have a brand new tank which is uh, uh, like which successfully clears the leak test. Okay, so it's been 24 hours, uh, the silicone's all set, so, uh, and before we go ahead and uh, do the leak test, let's do the nude foam, let's make it a little more uh, appealing, so take a blade, and whatever silicone that's oozing out from outside, which has already hardened up, just gently slice them out. Uh, again, this is not uh, mandatory. You may go ahead and skip this, but it just makes the tank look a little better.
is all I had to tell you about how to build your own aquarium. Please go through both the videos. This is part 2. There is another part 1. The link would be in the description. Uh, please check both of these videos out together. And I guess this will help you in getting a basic idea of how to build your aquariums. Again, the uh, uh, methods that I have shown in this video is not for professionally finished aquariums where you have minimum silicon or the glasses are uh, you know not in a regular shape and stuff like that this is a very basic uh, idea where you can go ahead and start to build aquariums and once you get used to this you can you know evolve in a way to uh, towards building better more complicated aquariums right? Uh, I cannot emphasize again enough on the idea of practicing. Uh, it's completely okay if you do not succeed in the first go. All right? It's actually surprising if you do build an aquarium uh, perfectly in the first go. Right? Make a mess out of it. Don't worry. Try again. All right? Uh, glasses are not too expensive it's if they are not too big. So try out with smaller aquariums once you get the hang of it. Uh, gradually uh, you know step up to bigger aquariums heavier glasses mix and match different ideas uh, it's not a mandate that you have to follow what I have shown you because these are the things that have worked for me but you might not be comfortable with some of the steps or ideas so please go ahead research uh, a lot of people work in different ways so please uh, use your own judgment to understand what really works for you and uh, you know uh, enjoy the hobby uh, that's the uh, most important thing over here enjoy what you're doing it's not a rat race right and uh, I guess I'll bring out another video uh, which not be technically part 3 but a spin-off of this video where I show you how to uh, and I get a more professional finishing with your aquariums like minimum silicon work or even how why and how to use bracing uh, if required stuff like that but I'll stick to the basics for only this video I really hope you liked what you have uh, seen or watched in these two parts uh, I would really appreciate if you uh, like comment and subscribe to my channel but the most important thing is I will need your feedback uh, there is a cap like commenting uh, area down below please go ahead and drop in your comments uh, it could be appreciation which would really <laughs> motivate me to get more videos out of here uh, criticize if you think that there have been mistakes I will definitely try to fix those right and apart from this youtube channel I have an instagram account a Facebook page and Google page, everything under the name of A Week's Aqua World. So please go ahead and check them out for latest updates on the stock, uh, the fishes that I keep, and even memes. All right. So I uh, will be looking forward to meeting you guys really soon again with uh, newer tutorials or videos. And uh, until then, signing off.